Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. So in previous couple of videos we talked about NestJS basic uh, building blocks, then NestJS with typo RM, then we talk about NestJS with a passport and JWT. Now in few couple of videos we are going to talk about uh, the miscellaneous topics about NestJS like how to do the health check, how to write a custom exception filter and a lot of uh, like how to write a custom logger, how to add a security layer in your SJS uh, APIs. All these things we are going to talk about. So first of all, we are going to talk about exception filter. Okay, so we will write one test controller. Here, let's do its test dot controller dot ts. And here we will write our random routes. We can even copy this app controller, which is doing the health check of our application. We will also talk about it, how you can do the health check of your application. Here the API tag says test and we are not injecting anything here. It's a test controller and this API we will test. Okay. And here we have these couple of methods. Let's say we have HTTP get which is let's say test let's say uh, filter so it will be api v1 test filter so first of all what is the need of exception filter because from our apis there can be internal server exception bad request exception or a 409 different bad request 409 um, different kind of status messages we are sending right but what if we wanted to have a proper structure of the error exception error exceptions we are throwing from the apis Okay, this would have a proper structure from which API this error is coming, uh, what is the exception message, what is the status code, everything is properly structured. For that particular thing, we can actually write an exception filter. So let's say uh, I'm writing this method test, which is API we even get filter, and here I'm just doing simply throw new uh, HTTP exception. And inside this HTTP exception, you can specify all the parameters like status. Status is HTTP status dot, uh, let's say, bad request. If it is going to come, so HTTP status dot, so it should be HTTP status dot. So all the HTTP status messages we have, let's say forbidden. Okay, this is your our status code, now error. Error can be your message. Like access to this resource is forbidden. Okay, and the status code. So this is our object and then finally, you will add a status code, let's say 403. This is what you send when you wanted to throw a forbidden status message. And we can get the HTTP status. And this HTTP status can also be imported from HTTP common, Angular common. I think that is correct. An HTTP exception can also be captured from angular common we don't need this fix all the imports now it is fine so this is the way we are actually throwing the exception but what if every place we have to end up uh, writing this whole thing writing this particular object status error message and the status code so how can we just get rid of this uh, instead of doing this we can write an exception filter right which will capture all these things status error particular routes and all these things so let's say this is uh, one status this is one api and we have written another api which is api tag filter test okay now i will be writing an exception filter okay that exception filter what that will do is that will try to format the messages whenever the any particular exception is occurring okay so how to use filters i mean you can use simply use filter and you can actually pass the the filter class so we are going to write http exception filter 
what that will do is that will create a proper structure of all the HTTP exceptions which are happening in our system okay so we can actually create that in the service okay it is going to catch the HTTP exception so let's create it inside a folder for now then we will decide the place HTTP exception dot filter dot ts okay so it will be a class uh, esx class same as the services and all these we are writing and it is going to catch http exception for us and it will be a class so we can write http class http exception filter it will implements implements exception filter and then inside the class let's import all these things before we get any error so we are using exception filter and all so i think we can get all these things from angular common import exception filter and catch exception filter and catch we have an http exception that we are getting from nest.js common okay now what we are writing in this is a simple method okay because we are going to implement the catch method catch method will have the exceptions and the host argument and what this method will return as a response object okay so we are going to this interceptor what it will does does is whenever the response is coming it extract out the response request and status and it will send the response object once it is done so this catch message will look something like this i will just use the template and let me just format this out fix the name export i mean a lot of eslint rules are there and this argument host i think we'll get it from the angular common okay so it is catching all the exceptions and response dot status so request response we have to get from express request comma response from express that's it so response is coming from uh, responses of type express so we are good now how to use this exception filter in our test controller we can just do okay new http exception filter something like this use filter we can import from nest.js common okay so i mean this is how we will import things this is exception filter we can import and this use filter and we are passing it so now this particular route will use this exception filter and whenever the response is being returned it will use this to format the error message and we will get the proper structure of the exception message whenever there is an http exception is happening so you can see http exceptions can be anything like uh, so there are different status code you can return 401 uh, uh, 401 403 uh, forbidden unauthorized all these exception messages and we will get the proper timestamp of the response what is the path what is the status code what is the message all these things we will receive okay so this is just a small miscellaneous item like how to write exception filter and how to implement it you can implement it for the controller route or at the controller level whatever you want okay now next thing is we can talk about another miscellaneous item which is about the health check okay so i will talk about the terminus module which is provided by nest.js you can see this app controller okay so what we want is in our nest.js apis we want a health check mechanism to see the health of our apis like api given health which our load balancer can also keep pinging to check the health of our apis and your apis might be doing a health check based on okay doing the ping to the database or doing to the ping of uh, your particular service here health check can be simple returning a hello world from the apis or you can also check the status of a particular service 
So this terminus module is provided by Next.js. Okay. What we are doing is we created API V1 Health. Okay. And we are just using this health check service. And this dot health dot check. This is going to just uh, check the type quorum. I mean, this is a type quorum health indicator is already exposed from the terminus module. We are just going to do the ping type quorum. So it will just do the select query on the database table. If it is giving OK, that means our systems are healthy. OK, and for the same, when you are adding this app controller to your main module, like this is the app module and I will be adding uh, this health controller. Okay, this is my app module inside the controller. Currently, we don't have anything. We can import this and there should be one terminus module we have to add, which is in the next series. Let me just see if we are able to get it. Terminus module. Yes, we have. So now this health check controller should be able to ping a particular service. Is it expecting something? Let me just see. Yes, it's a Next.js terminus. That is fine. Now, this terminus controller can use this health check service and should be able to do the ping for us. This is another miscellaneous item is like how to do the health check of uh, Next.js service. You can create this one single route and we are already using this API tags and all. So this will also expose to your swagger and you can do API given health that will do the ping to your type RM service. Another miscellaneous item is like how to do the security of Next.js services by using the helmet. So if you talk about simple express application, we use this uh, helmet module to add on to the security. You can actually remove the some common uh, common headers which expose the technology like express by that is header property. So it will disable the express by it will enable the chorus. It will use the helmet. So this is how we you uh, introduce the middleware in the express same way. This is the app instance. Okay, this is the nest express application. And we are enabling all the security measures here. We are actually enabling the CSP policy hide powered by no mime sniffing, right? When you add a no sniff means the you will not be able to do the mime sniffing the content type sniffing and the helmet already introduced all the relevant headers so your applications your APIs shouldn't be should be secure enough i mean they will not be exposed to any uh, cross-site scripting attack xss attacks and all these things whatever the security i mean this should be enough uh, you can actually check the helmet uh, module it also provides some enhanced securities like you can actually expose your application to a particular clients only i mean particular uh, origins Currently, it's enabling chorus for any particular client, but you can specify the, the cross origin methods and the origins from which you wanted to allow a communication. Okay. So I wanted I don't wanted to create a three different videos. So I merge all these things in a single video. This code is already available on the GitHub. Okay. So this is how you can add on to the security. This is how you can do the health check and this is how you can add the security for your APIs and you can create these custom filters, HTTP filters, right? We already talked about the validation pipe. I mean pipe which is actually doing the DTO validations. Okay. We are using those validation pipe at the controller level like use pipe and new validation pipe and whatever you are specifying in the DTOs that is being exposed and we have already talked about how uh, these DTO properties are exposed. You can, you can, you have to use this API property annotations. API property annotations that will actually expose these particular properties on the swagger also. So you can see API property here you can specify the description type required all these flags and then this particular property will be exposed when you see the swagger spec. Okay here you can add it to everyone description this is my DTO required type true so you can copy this you already have these types right and you can also add the validations for each and every property I mean I, I say that this is of type email right so you will say is email this is using class validation 
class validator for all these things and then we have this should be of type is string i mean we can add it after this it should be is string when you say each string the empty string is also allowed for this so you can actually set a min length min length is okay let's say this is the name four all right same validations i can add for password for password you can also add some custom validations and the now we'll import all the we'll import all these things through add all missing imports hit string min length is email and you can also set the min length four is still valid for this because when you are writing email it will be obviously will be of a new length four description you can set okay this is for email this is for uh, username this is for password and even you want to apply all these validations then you will just use validation pipe okay the cs link things always fix all should be this now we are good so this is the dto this dto we are already using in our controllers you see in the previous video we created this sign up and registration right so this is the use guard similarly you can also use use pipe and here you can do a new validation pipe And you can pass the arguments also okay so this is how you can actually introduce all these things use validation pipe here and use pipe also in the same import definition we can add okay i mean either you can add this to the controller level or at the route level so now whenever there is a dto it will validate it against this particular thing and here it takes a lot of arguments like you can you can provide all the different options we have you can see this these validation options if you go inside this you will be able to see the transform disable error message transform options right so all these boolean properties you can specify i mean transfer options you should specify transform should be true disable error message should be true if we can check the descriptions what these specific types specifies in the validation pipe okay so that's it guys in this video uh, thanks everyone